Once you decide to dive into the real estate investing world, it won't be long before you hear the term accredited investor. Once you notice how many passive real estate and non-real estate investment opportunities are openly advertised and therefore limited to accredited investors, you may get curious. Even if you're a total newbie, it's important to know the difference between an accredited and non-accredited investor, aka sophisticated investor, and if you're one of them. Neither of these titles requires an application or an approval process. You can find out whether you are an accredited investor based on a few simple criteria. Hi there, I'm Harry Nima Segarra, founder of Nima Equity. Today, we'll talk about what accreditation is and why does it matter when considering investing in a real estate syndication. To be an accredited investor, you must either first have an annual income of $200,000 individually or $300,000 for joint income for the past two years and expect to earn the same income or higher the current year. Or second, have a net worth of over $1 million, not counting your primary home. Let's go through a couple of examples. First up, we have Vicky. Vicky has had a corporate career for 10 years and she is single. She just got a raise two months ago and now she makes $200,000 per year. She has $700,000 in her 401k and $350,000 between her savings and a few brokerage accounts. She owes, however, $100,000 in student loans. So, does Vicky qualify as an accredited investor? Even though Vicky currently makes $200,000 and has a good reason to believe she will continue making that amount or more in the coming year, her annual income over the past two years has been below the $200,000 criteria. Now, Vicky's net worth is $700,000 from her 401k plus $350,000 from her savings and brokerage accounts minus $100,000 from her student loans equaling $950,000. Since her net worth is just under the $1 million requirement, Vicky is not an accredited investor. Now let's meet Zoe and Tom. Zoe is a physician and she earns $285,000 a year. Tom is a stay-at-home dad, so he earns no income. They bought a single-family rental home for $500,000 and have $200,000 balance on it. They have $300,000 in saving plus $600,000 in retirement. So do Zoe and Tom qualify as accredited investors? Based on income alone, they do not qualify since their joint income is below $300,000. However, their net worth is $500,000 from the single family rental minus the $200,000 balance they owe on that rental, plus $300,000 in savings, plus $600,000 in retirement, totaling $1.2 million, which is above the $1 million threshold. Because they meet one of the two criteria, Zoe and Tom are accredited investors. Does it matter if you're an accredited investor? The main perk of being an accredited investor is access to more investment opportunities or deals. Why? In the eyes of the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission, being an accredited investor means that you are savvy enough to have figured out how to accumulate some wealth. Thus, more investment opportunities are open to you since you are in a better position to take on risk. If you are a non-accredited investor who happens to love real estate, there are still plenty of investment opportunities available, including passive investments through real estate syndications. However, since the SEC regulations do not allow investments for non-accredited investors to be openly advertised, you may just have to search harder to find them. Not sure whether you are an accredited investor or just want to learn more about investment opportunities open to you? Sign up for our NEMA Equity Doctors Investing Club today. You will find the link down below in the description. All right, it's time for me to sign off. But before I do, please make sure you subscribe to this channel. If you like this video or know anyone that could benefit from a real estate syndication, hit the like button and share this video with them. I'm Harry Nima Segarra with Nima Equity. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.